And again, doctors, how much time does it take you to do a parametric evaluation? It takes me like this much time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to take an x-ray? I don't really know. I don't even know if I could take an x-ray anymore. Um, so that's the point. Very, now you're starting to see how this is very assistant driven. Very assistant driven. Do you do this on all new patients? All new sleep patients? Uh, no, all new patients. Uh, all no, all, all new sleep and all new TMJ and ortho patients. Uh, uh, if I identify something on a new dental patient that raises my suspicion, then they go right into this stuff. Because of the crossover between TMD and OSA. You'll find that your TMD patients, 72 to 74% of the time, have OSA. To me, TMD used to be the center of my universe. Reason is when I cured when I cured when I treated the TMD, most of my patients restored their lives. Compliance, and not everybody's going to get the same frame. All right, you you're going to be a home run, okay? But he, I love we'd love to do a pharyngometer on you. It's probably a genetically small airway is his problem, and he might not collapse at all because he looks kind of fit. So his prognosis would be. We'll do the best we can and make sure he doesn't have any nasal patency issues. However, your prognosis for opine therapy might be better than his. Wouldn't you want to know that? Or would you rather just kind of give everybody the same appliance and give everybody a, a somnodent and just sort of do it the same way? Or might you want to tailor your treatment to that specific patient? That is my point. And you, so when we go back to on 4-2 was his initial exam, this was his original pharyngometer. Daytime is huge. He's an athlete. I mean, he's tough. Look at his collapse. Okay, minimum 1.23, average of 1.56. I, and I'm willing to admit this, I did not look at this. I went straight to my iCAT scans. I went straight to the, I went straight to, looking at inclusion, I went straight to the TMJ, and I just really didn't look at this, okay? So it was kind of an oops on my part. But when I wasn't getting the job done, does that mean we need more treatment or more diagnosis? More diagnosis. So I went back over my results and data and everything we collected, and I looked at this and I said to myself, what in the hell did I miss? When you see a collapse like this, it's quite likely he's doing what in his sleep. Remember, this is best case scenario. And he's down here. Okay, here's two, one and a half, one point. Okay, he, his airway is very collapsible, isn't it? And I had overlooked it. I had overlooked it. But luckily, I went back uh, and kind of took a look at it. I looked at the nighttime the program I put in his mouth, and it actually helped him. Okay, it actually had helped them, but it wasn't enough, all right? Let's talk about rhinometry. Well, why would we use a rhinometer? Just make appliances, okay? Well, we talked about the landmarks. We've got the nostril, and we're looking at the posterior and anterior inferior terminate. That's the big player. In your nose, let me go back. In your nose in terms of nasal, in terms of nasal resistance, most of it has to do with this inferior terminate, a little bit with the middle, and none of, none of the superior. So what we're really looking at is the, the nasal patency where it counts the most. So why would we use rhinometry? I mean, why? Why, why do you need to use rhinometry? Nasal patency, number one, you've got to establish nasal patency. Number two, it's very non-invasive. That's why I've got my, one of my main pulmonologists look, he's probably going to go to rhinometry. Okay? Number two, ENT communication. It's a recognition. If someone said to you, hey, baby, uh, 28 implants. I mean, would you pay attention if I was speaking your language? Or 28 implants? What? Bam! He's like, what? 28 what? You want me to do what? You know? So it's, it's really it's recognized by our medical colleagues. Allergist referral, okay? You know, if you come in and your nose has a bunch of different measurements over time, and you, you know, that's an allergy. That's not a giant polyp, okay? And then oral pine therapy prognosis, again, directly affected by what? Nasal patency. Huh, very important. I mean, would you evaluate someone periodontally without x-rays and a periodontal probe? No, this is our x-ray and our periodontal probe. 
So let's talk about, let me show you a case where, without rhinometry, we might have screwed this up. So here's a lateral set. Here's the airway, wide open. Anybody used to look at lateral sets? That was a wide open airway. That was beautiful, okay? But what I want to do now is let's cut through Barry and let's take Barry C, not Barry G. Um, I'd love to cut through that there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, I'm teasing, sorry. Anyway, let's take a look. At, let's take a look at the perinasal sinuses. So here we are in the front, of the, just right through the tip of the nose, okay? Here we are moving back, back, back. Now, a normal sinus should look like this, shouldn't it? Big black hole, right? Normal perinasal sinus, use your superior, middle, and inferior terminate. And, oh, wait a minute. This is normal. What is that? Okay. That is a, where's the medial wall of the maxillary sinus? Gone. Okay. This is one fungating animal in there. Okay. Here is the, again, here's a picture of the perinasal sinus. This is what the, what the rhinometer is measuring. Here is the left side, normal, kind of like yours. Here's the left side. Here's the right side. There, something going on. See that? So do you think this alerted me to take a closer look at this guy's nose? Absolutely. Do you think I would have, if I didn't have instrumentation, would I have made him an appliance anyway? Would I would have maximized the benefit of the appliance without opening up the nose? 